and, and identifies okay. as a Muslim because of that shahada. Okay, so to right. say a few words and to identify something makes you that thing. Is that correct? Yes, legally. No legally. Problem. That gives you the okay. right to call yourself a Muslim. Correct. Do you have so to pray five any... times a day to be a Muslim? No. Okay. Uh, do you as have I, to as I was saying, do you have to give zakat to be a Muslim? Yes, you do. But again, there are different interpretations of what that is. How, how do you uh, interpret it? Okay, so does everybody see what's going on here? This is literally a court If you can't answer the question, that's fine. I can answer I all thought, your What happened just I a mean, couple minutes ago, too? Oh, I'm willing to answer anything without do you, yes, what do you How am, do you define zakat? But, again, this is a... This is a this, are we in a court? Because it, it sounds like we're in a court. Dr. No, no, I'm just trying to demonstrate it? that your definition no, 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 of Muslim no, no, no. and our definition of, of Muslim is very different. According to I you, agree, you don't have to pray five times a day to be a Muslim. I complete, According I to you, you don't have to pay zakat account. to be a Muslim. You don't have to, well, you, you, your zakat is charity, so we, uh -huh. one doesn't have to do that. But I and your zakat you is paying to the Aga Khan, correct? Correct, so you don't need okay, to very demonstrate. Good. Let's move on to the next one, Hajj. Do you okay, have to do Hajj see, to be a Muslim? Uh, hold on, so, so you see, this is not a dialogue, because I'm trying to say something, and you're like, no, let's move on to the next question. No, no, we're just going through the five pillars of faith and affirming no, whether no, no. you affirm them or not. Camel. Okay, mm. Riz, are you here? Are you hearing this? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Camel, Camel, just let him, okay. let him answer. You see the issue? Camel. I'm, I'm happy. Okay, was I unfair? Camel, let, me, let him answer the five pillars of Islam. Let him answer that you can respond. Please, please. Okay. Camel, your first, your, whole, your first thing you said, you said, I want to demonstrate that being a Muslim for you guys, right? is different than your definition of a Muslim. So I'm saying you don't need to demonstrate that because I agree with that. Am I cutting or is he? Are you there? Yeah, so I said, I said that I already agree that our definition of what makes someone Muslim is different from Camel and his community's definition. So you don't need to demonstrate that. That point is already granted. It's kind of, it's, I'll give an analogy, Khalil. You can tell me if you agree. It's kind of like a man saying he wants to identify as a woman, correct? No, because no, in that case, okay. no, because the, the, the difference is, is that you have an objective definition of a man, a woman. Yeah, same like in Islam. Case, we have an objective definition. Ah, uh, so that, so there's a definition Which that you don't you affirm. Endure. But you have a definition that you and your community consider to be objective. Yeah, that, we, that'd be what a, a man that identifies as a woman said. He'd say the same thing. Now, <laughs> let's go so, back to the pillars again, because the, these are, this no, is how we no, define no, no, Muslim. No, 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 no. Again, no yes, but, yes, but, yes, 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 yes. Because Khalil, okay. this is important for the audience to understand because you, you hide this. To you, you don't have to pray five times a day. To, in fact, we you don't, don't have to pray at excuse all. Excuse me, we don't hide this. This is public Oh, okay, knowledge. so you don't pray I at all. We pray three times a day. We have a different okay. prayer than what in your prayer. It's and you pay your zakat to the Aga Khan, correct? Absolutely, just like Very the good. zakat was prayed to the Prophet. Can we explain the Aga Khan to us? Explain we'll the Aga Khan. Get to, oh, believe me, we'll get to the Aga Khan. How about Hajj? You don't have to do Hajj, right? Hajj to you is visiting and uh, laying eyes on the Aga Khan, is that correct? We recognize two forms of Hajj. Mm. There's the Hajj to Mecca, the exoteric Hajj, then mm -hmm. there's a pilgrimage to see the Imam. So there mm -hmm. are two forms of Hajj. The pilgrimage to Mecca is not emphasized and it's not mandatory. It's optional. Okay, very good. So you don't have to do it, and basically you, the Hajj, the way you defined it, is a, in quote, glimpse of the Aga Khan. Is that correct? Yes, you, to see the Aga Khan. Is to see the Aga Khan, very good. Yes, and this has always been our tradition, because the Aga Khan is the Imam. Okay. Can you, can you describe the Aga Khan? Because I have a prayer book here. It's an authorized Ismaili publication. It says, Seek at the times of difficulties the help of your Lord. The yes. present living Aga Khan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that says, literally, uh, the word is Tawasalu. So this is Tawasalu. No, no, it says, seek the help of your Lord, the, the living Aga Khan. Yeah, yeah, so the word for Lord is Mola. And the word for seeking is Tawasalu. So this is, uh, this is an affirmation that we do Tawasalu. We seek the mediation of our Mola the present uh -huh. living Imam, Shakir Imam uh -huh. Husseini. Absolutely. We do uh -huh. Tawassal through him. Uh-huh. The person that you believe is Masum, correct? 
We believe he's Masum. He's the hereditary Imam of the time in direct succession to the Prophet. Okay, can he give an a incorrect verdict on matter of religion? No. Okay, so when he makes alcohol halal, is that correct? He hasn't made alcohol halal. He sells alcohol, so he, it must be correct. Selling alcohol is different from consuming it. We are allowed to okay, sell so alcohol you... as part of a business uh, activity. We're not allowed to drink uh, alcohol. Okay, thank you for making that clear. <clears throat> How about interest? Interest is fine as long as it's okay. not like uh, uh, usury. Okay. So the Quran is very clear that interest is prohibited. It's very clear that uh, alcohol is prohibited. So how no, can the your Quran has the authority to make to make this uh, to make this allowable? Okay. So the Quran is against the consumption of alcohol. Uh -huh. Right. And I know selling it according to. Yeah, not selling it. Now I know you'll have hadith that say it can't be sold. That's fine. That guidance on not being able to sell it that was appropriate for its time. The Imam okay. updates the guidance for new time. Okay. So you don't worship the Aga Khan. You don't think he's uh, divine in any way. You don't think that he's a representative or a manifestation of God. Because I'm going to bring uh, some sources for you. Okay. So being a representative of God and even being a manifestation of the divine names do not entail the divinity uh, of the person. Uh, okay. So you believe he's a, ma a manifestation of the divine names? Correct. But remember, oh. we locate, we locate okay. the divine names and qualities in the first intellect. Okay, not which is in the, the imam divine here. essence. Because we, well, no, the first intellect is the first creation of God. The imams, okay. for all the Shia, Twelvers and Ismaili, they are the manifestations and the sense of the mirrors created mirrors of the first intellect. Okay, very good. Liz, can you uh, post what I sent you? So, okay, according to you, the Imams have the manifestation of, or the attributes of God. Thank you for making that clear. No, also, that's not what I said, Camel. Are you deaf? No, that is what you I said. I said it three seconds ago. I said something, and you completely misstated it. Well, restate. Restate for the audience. Because you said okay. the, the Imam is the manifestation of God. I can read you the sources if you I like. I got them up my the sleeve. Imam but you said you don't have a problem. So, if I say so-and-so is a manifestation of God, the manifestation is created. Okay, so can you affirm for the audience that you believe that this Imam, the Aga Khan, is the manifestation of God? So I don't have yeah, to so, do... But I'm going to be precise, right? Mm. So our doctrine says that the Imams, each Imam, and also Prophet Muhammad, the Prophet... And, and, and I've written this publicly. This is not some secret, okay? There, I have an article in the Journal of Sufi Studies that, that explains this very clearly. So the imam, the individual person of the imam, the person of the prophet, they are mirrors, okay, creaturely mirrors, in which the attributes of the first intellect are reflected, but not incarnated. So you don't get... The, the attribute of the first intellect in its so, essence. So I don't, in the Khalid, I don't understand any of that. I don't understand any of, of that. Do you love, believe that your imams are a manifestation of God? Again, that's a bit simplistic. Technically, the term. Yeah, I'm a simple person, the, Khalid. The, is locate, uh, Well, look, Camel, if you don't understand, okay, I'm happy to send you an article I've written in the Journal of Sufi Studies, which explains this. So, so before we get to your article, Riz, can you post the link that I sent you on the thing above? Again, can I, am I allowed to finish my sentences? What is going yes, on? Yes, you are, you are. Can you post it, uh, Riz? Thank oh. you. Excuse me, no, this is a new, if, if this is supposed to be a neutral space, then, then no We're just dialoguing, Khalid, don't worry, don't, you don't have to get upset. Well, We're I just don't know what you're posting. Anybody can post any link. So, as I said, in Shia doctrine generally, both Ismaili, Twelver, and in the Sufi doctrine of the school of Ibn Arabi, the prophet, and by extension each imam, is a creation. But this creation is a mirror of the divine names and attributes which exist in the first intellect. So what you have in the imam is not the attributes themselves, they remain transcendent, but a reflection of the attribute as far as the human uh, existence permits. Okay, that's that's it's that's a similar, good enough explanation. It's similar to well, how, well, Khalid, that's a good enough explanation. No, 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 no. Thank you. We don't need a 
Camel. It's a dialogue. It's not a khutbah. So thank you very much for no, that explanation. I'm allowed to answer questions. Camel. I know, but I'm you're allowed not to, allowed to go on indefinitely. If, Camel, if you, if you interrupt my Khalil, response, if you interrupt my response... You're free to, you're free to uh, run away if you like. This is not a, a, a lecture where you can lecture to everybody. This is a dialogue. You, in, you don't have the position a, of sitting up on a stage and telling people what to think and how to think. So th that's not the si that's you, not no, the no, situation. No, 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 Khalil, you Khalil, Khalil, Khalil thank you for your explanation. You said it's a mirror, a mirror of his his uh, divine attributes. I understood that. Thank you very much. Okay, so but I'm. We're going to move on to the next thing. I'm yeah, thank you very much for the explanation. We're going to move on okay, to the next so, thing. No, no, can no, no, you, no, 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 no. Can you? This is not a dialogue. Then this this is a cross. Yeah, yeah we're you talking. You're talking. I'm talking. Yeah, but but you're not. Yeah, you're talking. I'm talking. I'm going to read. I'm going to read for you you're something. You're not respecting your interlocutor. You're exactly no, no, you're not, not respecting me. But you're talking down to me, Khalil. Listen to me. I'm not talking. I'm going to read you something, and I want you to get a comment. No, 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 no. You're interrupting. You're no, 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 interrupting no, no, what me, I Khalil. say, and you're saying let's listen move to me. On. I'm going to read you something. I'm going to read you something. I'm going to read you something. I want to get your thoughts on it. It says in quotes. The very first sentence. Hold on. Hold on. The very first sentence. Hold on. It says the very we first haven't. sentence referred to the Aga Khan both as a living God and quote a living God and in quotes the spokesman for Almighty God. Yeah. Who I'll wrote read that, that to you again. Yeah, I know this. The who very first it? sentence referred oh, to the Aga Khan. It? I want the source. Yeah, I'm I'm asking you, do you affirm this? No. Okay, you don't. No, and in fact when that when that was written, the Aga Khan's office wrote a response to it and said this is extremely offensive to us. Uh, okay, so speaking of the Aga Khan, <clears throat> it says in following, the Aga Khan, in this case, Aga Khan, blah, 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 uh, the living Imam, and oh, okay, so, yeah, in quotes, in quotes, as follows, that the Aga Khan is, in quotes, a living God. You don't, you, you don't, uh, we don't believe you deny that, this. and no, no Imam has call, called himself the living God. Okay, so if I post a link above where the Aga Khan says that his followers worship him, I know How that, would your response be to that? Because worship there is, doesn't mean worship him as God. Worship no, no, that doesn't matter. Word. I'm talking about worship in the sense of asking for your needs. No, that uh, again, right? To in, in in the English language, especially in British English, the word mm -hmm. worship also means to revere and to honor, to adore. So, do we do we revere and honor and adore the Imam? Yes. Do we see the Imam as God? No. So, so you okay? Let me just affirm the language. You affirm the imam as the manifestation of God. You we quote unquote worship the imam it means as something the different. By of the first intellect, the first intellect is the first creation of God. So yeah, I don't know be, what that means. I, I clear, the manifestation uh, again, of God. I, is. No, no, no. Every time I try to Khalil, Khalil, let me make this simple. Let me make this simple. Let me make this simple. Let me make this simple for the audience. Is the imam to you? Is the imam to you as Jesus is to the Christians in the sense no. that he is a manifestation of some sort no, of God? No, no, no. There are some major differences. Now, are you going to let me explain the difference, or are you going to move on? You can go for it. Go ahead. All right. There are two, at least two, key differences for the Christians. Okay, the uh, the celestial archetype that manifests as Jesus. So, what is being manifested for Christians? That is God. That's uncreated for Christians. The Son of God is uncreated. He's not created. So that's one difference for us. The first intellect is created. It's not uncreated. So that's difference number one. The first intellect essence is not the divine essence, but the, the essence of the Son of God is the divine essence for Christians. Difference number two, the Christians believe that the Son of God, which is an eternal, uncreated entity, they believe that that Son of God became joined and literally united to human flesh. Yeah, he's a manifestation of God, I understand. No, no, that's incarnation. You see, you are conflating purposely two different theological concepts. No, it's because a manifestation. You're just no, playing with no, words. No, it's not playing with words. It's not playing with words. For Christians, the second person of the Trinity who's uncreated became a human. That son of God took on human flesh and inhabited a human body and walked around on earth within that body. The Ismailis and the Shia don't believe that about the Imams. For us, the first intellect, which is still created, didn't actually take on a human body. Rather, the first intellect 
is being reflected, and reflections are always limited, so it's being reflected in a human soul, and that human soul is in a human body. So these are two completely different concepts, and the imam is actually several metaphysical degrees lower than God. For Christians, so, so, God so here's the and the flesh that, Khalil, are joined. Uh, thank you for the long... I, I listened. Thank you very much. Here's the problem with that. The, the Aga Khan declares imama to be understood or basically explained as a manifestation of God. Now, you went on a very long tangent about that. what that means, but let's, let's have the Aga Khan uh, tell us what he means by that. In quotes, it says, These concepts to be explained and understood in the general perspective of God's communication to man. The imam to be explained as the mazhar of God, and the relationship between God and the imam to be related to varying levels of inspiration and communication from God to man. Essentially, for you, when the imam says something, it's as good as if God says something. No, 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 no. I want you to read the whole thing, the whole last part. Don't cut it off. No, no, I didn't the cut it off. Said these no, no, steps, the relationship between God and the imam to be related to varying levels of inspiration and communication from God to man. Okay, so there you go. So here you have, there's a clear, dis throughout the whole passage, there's a clear distinction between God and the Imam. The Imam is not declared to yeah, be God. Yeah. He's declared I, to be I'm the not, Azhar of God. Khalil, let's be clear, I'm not saying that you believe God is the Imam, in the, sen the Imam is God in the sense that he is, he is God. But what I'm saying is he shares the attributes of God, and he's a manifestation in some sort no, of God's... A, a, so a Mazhar, a Mazhar right is ontologically different from what it manifests that's why it's a mazhar the term mazhar is a mirror it refers to the locus of the zuhur the locus of the appearance of Khalil, forget mirrors and locus and no, zuhur. That's what mazhar forget all this stuff you can't can quote Khalil. something Khalil. you can't quote something Khalil. and then you Khalil. claim Khalil. to say what Khalil. Khalil, let me that. let me ask you a very simple and direct question. Just just avoid the the and trying if to. If you actually look, if Khalil, you actually stick actually with me. Hold, stick no, with no, me no, for a second. No, no, you stick with, with me. Now. You are. No, no, no. You stick with me. Listen, listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Khalil, stick with me for a sec. Stick with me for a second. When the imam says something, is this basically isma? In other words, is this the word of Allah? Sorry. Khalil, when, when the, the imam, imam does yeah, something, it carries the authority of God. Yes. Okay. Thank you very That's much. Divine authority. Thank you very name. much. Yeah. Thank you very much. So the imam's word is essentially as good as the word of God. Thank you. That's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, it has divine authority behind it. Yes. Thank you very much. That's all I was trying to get at. Now, I have a uh, a link that like I put above. He who obeys the imam I, I, obeys God. That's all I wanted to get, Khalid. We don't have to go any further. That's very good. You believe that the imam's word is as good as the word of God. Thank you very much. That's what we wanted to get to. Now, here's the question. There's an Ismaili book that was published, and it says that this man, the Aga Khan, his name to whose name prostration is due. Now, you uh, went on a little tet wheel of the word worship, but I'm interested to see how you're going to go around this. To his name, prostration is due. Explain. So the word is Lidhikri Sujud. And by the way, this is not, our prayer doesn't say that today. It's in the link above. Yeah, I know, but that our actual prayer today doesn't say that. We say, Allahumma laka sujudi wa ta'ati. Did your prayer at any time say that? The, I think at one point, not you, but this wasn't universal to all Ismailis. There were like certain, I think, only Ismailis in the subcontinent for a few years. They said Lidvikri Sujud, but Lidvikri Sujud doesn't mean to whose name prostration is due. Okay, so Khalil doesn't actually this mean is, that. This is literally taken from the English version of the yeah, Dua the book English, that's published yeah, by. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, no, know, no, 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 no. Khalil, this is published, this is literally published by the official Ismaili Association. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, say yeah, to yeah, whose name yeah. prostration is due. Yeah, that, that translation is not correct. It's it's published by the official Ismaili Association. I understand, but it's a translation in, into English. So Yes, done by the official Ismaili Association. Yeah, 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 sure. 
But it's a translation in English. It's not the most accurate. It's not an accurate translation. So if you go back to Ismaili books, so 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 let let let's get let me just no, get no, something clear, Khalil. Let, let's Tamil, let's get. You can't bring up a text, then you ask me whether I agree with it. What does? Do you want me to go dig up the Arabic for you or the the Urdu or whatever? I just said the Arabic is Lidvikri Suju. I know the Arabic. I've written an article on this. Okay, so Lidvikri. Lidvikr, so you're making vikr of this Aga Khan. Lidvikri, Lidvikri, he, so you remember him, Sujud, is, yeah. is you affirm that. So, so the idea is this. We have an expression, if you read an Ismaili text, even from the 1200s, okay, when the name of the Imam is mentioned, you, prostration is due when you mention the Imam's name. Okay, we can leave it there, khalas, thank you very much. Yeah. So that's the idea. This is when the Quran says that for those who, and I'm paraphrasing, but it's in Surat, uh, Surat As-Sajda, the Quran even says that when the ayah and the signs of God are mentioned to believers, they fall down prostrate. Okay, so I get it. So when the name of the Aga Khan is mentioned, you fall down prostrate. Yeah, you because the Aga. Okay, thank you, Khalil, bro. You don't have to. Do, that's all we need to know. Just some very basic stuff. Thank no, you. When the name of the Aga Khan is heard, you fall down prostrate. No problem. This, this, this is a Quranic idea. When the signs of God are made, yes, it says yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, but the prostration right. is not too. No, no, but you mistrant you. you no, 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 no. Don't worry about that, Khalil. You made it very clear yeah. that when the name of the Aga Khan is mentioned, prostration is due. We yeah, get that. The prostration is to God. That's the difference. You are trying to deceive the audience. Uh, Khalil, I'm not deceiving the audience. Very simple. Somebody says name Aga Khan, they prostrate. That's yeah, it. But the, the That's prostration it. is due to God. So if you look no at problem. the prayer. But what prayer prompted that prostration, Khalil? Yeah. The name of the Aga Khan. Yeah, absolutely. He, the Aga no problem. Thank you very much. The Imam is a sign of God. And when the signs of God are mentioned, prostration is due to God. And the Imam is a sign of God. No problem. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, We're just in progress like here. Thank you very much. Mary were a sign of God and things in nature. Yes, the only difference is Isa is mentioned in the Quran. Now, yeah, we're well, going to go back. Quranist. Are you a Quranist? Khalil, I don't believe the Imam, the Imam, it's your Imam. We, do you want to get, we can go into a different direction. I don't believe that the Imam on the Yacht is a Quran, is a, is a, is a Quran that he's the okay. word of God. Again, you, so, accept, you accept wealthy kings like David and Solomon as prophets. They owned much more than Yacht. So, there's a logical fallacy in your argument. Simply owning a certain property uh, doesn't disqualify one from imama. Ah, okay. So maybe since you brought a property, we can move in that direction. So the Aga Khan is estimated to be one of the world's wealthiest people who owns a $200 million <laughs> yacht, many yachts, in fact. He owns uh, banks. He owns insurance companies. He owns meat uh, companies. He owns airline companies. One which, when, which went belly up. You think a Muslim imam would have the business acumen to keep his company afloat, um, et cetera, et cetera. Horse breeding companies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When you pay twelve and a half percent of your to your imam, you're essentially enriching him. So no, we're not personally enriching him. Of course, he's one of the world's wealthiest people. How do you think he made his money? He didn't make. He doesn't make his money from our offering. So where did it come from? Where did it come from? It comes from like the family wealth, royal marriages, and the actual businesses themselves. All of yeah, yeah. So where did all that come from? All of this wealth is recent. It was recently generated and like the yeah. Where did it come from, Khalil? It came from the family's personal money. Yeah, yeah. Where did that money come from? The family's personal money. So it's centuries past. Right. Centuries well, I thought you said it was recent. Centuries past is different. Is it recent no, no, or centuries no. past? Which one? Okay. So, well, let me tell you. So mm, the tell family, me. yeah. So this family, right, were the governors of Kermat for several generations in Iran. So they had a personal wealth from there. Okay. okay how did they make that money? They get they get payment from uh, from the ruling dynasty. And then they married twice into the Qajar royal family. Khalil, they Khalil, the, Khalil the Aga Khan today that has these airline companies and the meat companies and all this, yeah, like yeah. billions of dollars, a $200 million that, yacht. That you're going to say this really came from centuries ago, some guy and... No. The, are you serious? Well, okay, again, Hamel, the family has family wealth inherited over many generations. In the modern uh -huh. period, in the late 1800s and 19, early 1900s, they... 
in Europe and in the Western world, they invested that wealth in various enterprises, business properties, horse racing, uh, uh -huh. horse breeding, all that. Okay, uh -huh. and this, so they made these wealth generating investments, and this has uh -huh. been like over a hundred years now of this. So the Aga Khan's personal. Okay, wealth so that initial seed from, fund, where did it come from, Khalil? Because today it's it over thirteen point three billion of what we know, and then it's just tied up in money, etc. Where's the seed from? The, from? It came from the family's own money. And okay, if you who? Go Can you give me the name of this person? Okay. I have the internet in front of me. I'm going to look let, him up. Who? Finish. Whose money did this come from? Okay, am I allowed to finish? Or yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay, because every time I talk, you add another question. No, no, it's the same question. Where did all this come from? All this okay. wealth, where did it come from? It's the same so, question. It's not changing. Again. Okay, so do you want to add any more questions? Because I, you've asked about 10 questions. No, it's the I same question. Where did the money come from? Okay, I want to respond to your 10 questions. One now, question. I where mean, did the money come from? I'm going to tell you. Tell me. Okay, but can I not be interrupted? Okay, well, just no, no, go for it. Thank you. Okay. So, the Aga Khan family, okay, if you go back to gen generations, every person, every generation was an Imam of the Ismaili. Okay? So, before the modern period, okay, basically before 1800, and all Shia accept this, okay, the offerings given to the imam by the community, they were used by the imams for their personal welfare. Okay, I'm in glad you made that clear. In the pre-modern period. This is the case, it was always a thing. Okay, okay. so they used the money, the 12.5% for their own personal welfare. Of course, and they also used Very it good. for the community. They had full control. Now, mm -hmm. during those periods, right, the imams also started to engage in certain activities that would bring them an income apart from the community's money. Uh -huh. Okay, such as the governorship positions that they held in Qajar, Iraq. Uh -huh. All right. So then they come to India, and again, any they also they also generate wealth through marriages, which is a uh -huh. very common thing. So marriages into royal families, was a marriage with a Safavid uh, princess, marriage with two Qajar princesses, and so on. So that also brings wealth into the family. So mm -hmm. in the, in the pre-modern period, they have these two sources of wealth, okay, and they're using they the imam has always been the sole person who decides how the religious offerings are used, mm -hmm. and he's always been entitled, from a theological perspective, to use that for his personal benefit. Okay, and so he can use the twelve and a half percent for his personal he, benefit. He completely can. He has every mm -hmm. right to. Now, in okay. the past, right, in the distant past, this family was not well off. They were not well off. Oh, so they weren't well off. Not in the distant past. They, they only start building personal wealth in the uh -huh. 1800s. Uh, okay. Through marriages and this and that. Right, through, yes, through marriages. And, and the 12.5%, correct? Right, right. So okay. now what happens is that starting in the late 1800s and from then on, when the imam personally became wealthy, okay, the imam elected his choice, he elected to separate his personal assets, his personal wealth, mm -hmm. and the wealth of the office of the imamate, mm -hmm. which is from the community, that the community mm -hmm. offered. Do you understand that? So what you're telling me, so I understand, is the Aga Khan's estimated $13.3 billion in wealth, his $200 million yacht, the airline companies, the estates in Portugal, the south of France, etc., etc., etc. All of this, somehow, it's uh, from good investments. It's not from 12.5%. Uh, well, I think here's the issue. All these, firstly, there's been no actual, there's been no actual valuation of his personal wealth. So all these estimates you hear about, in the media, what they do, and they're just estimates from afar. They oh, so we actually not, don't know much about his money. Well, we don't know. We nobody actually has a definitive number. Ah, why is that, Khalil? Because because it's a it's a private matter. It's ah, so how are you how are you speaking so confidently on it if it's private? Because, because the Aga Khan 
publicly has told us about these divisions and distinctions, and in the, uh, the, the will of the prior Aga Khan, that separation was there. Okay, okay, so we actually don't know anything, but he said something, and because you think he's not so, you believe him. Is that basically yeah, the story? Yeah, I believe, I believe it. Okay, and thank you very much. He's consistently said it. So, in the modern period, ever since the family did get personal wealth, since they became personally wealthy, which is in the late 1800s, okay. each Aga Khan, each Imam, has elected to separate the assets of the Imamate. I get that. Okay. And, and this is from the wealth. imam. Basically, every all this information you're saying it. Yes. Uh, from what the imam yes, says. It's from the imam. Yeah. Okay. And the, the reason imam, you're saying that is because the there's the, the reason you're saying this is because actually there's no other source that you can actually get a number on for how wealthy he actually well, I, is. I, I you just believe what the imam says. I believe what the imam says. We we as Chinese okay. we Thank don't we don't audit so, our so, imam. So I actually don't believe what the imam says. So there's varying estimates. That's, that's, that's fine, but, but that's fine. But yeah. But let me give me a second. 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 Again. Yes. 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 So bring up all this stuff about wealth. No. No. It's a discussion. Throw in a bunch of terms, numbers. No. 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 Khalil, respond. Yeah. Yeah. Khalil, you gotta relax, man. Listen. We actually the comp the conversation hasn't been that complicated so far. I'll recap it for you. Um, I said the imam is very wealthy. How did he make this money? You said, well, actually, generations passed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I said, where do you get this information? You said, oh, the imam said so, and I believe it. And you said, actually, we don't know much about his wealth. There's estimates. There's actually not much uh, that we know. I asked you, well, how do you speak so confidently about it? You said, oh, because the imam told me so. So I can give some uh, some estimates here. So Forbes estimates his uh, wealth to be around a billion dollars. Uh, Wikipedia. Again, again, hold on, Khalil, just let her finish. Khalil, give me a sec, man. No. Give me a sec. No, give me a sec. Khalil, you can answer would, afterwards. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Uh, See, wait, this wait, makes wait, him scared because he knows that this guy's getting rich. Wait, wait, wait. Listen, no, no, hold on. Khalil, I, I promise you can respond after. You're always cutting off, man, because you don't stop talking. Just Khalil. one second, man. Okay, okay. You know what? Listen, listen. You can go to. This is your last chance. Do you want no, 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 bro, this is your last chance. What do you no. think you are? You got to sit down and let the professor talk to you. Uh, 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 listen to me. All right, listen to me. Listen to me. If that's your attitude, that I have to sit down and let the, the professor yes. talk. Good. Yeah, yes, You're not a professor. Yes. Go ahead and take a seat. Take a seat. Take a seat. No, take no, no. a seat and let me talk. Guys, take a seat and let me talk. Please, guys, guys, guys. It was going so well. Okay. It was going so well. Guys, guys, guys. doctor, nobody disturbs you when you were saying everything. Please, uh, please. Okay, this, okay. hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, Camel, you go ahead. I'm going to let you finish, then I have something to say. Yeah, yeah, no problem. It's a conversation. It's a conversation, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Khalil. Thank you. Can yeah, thank I you, add uh, 30 seconds just after Camel or Khalil, whoever? Yeah, go for it, David. I'll, I'll jump in okay. after. No problem. So, Khalil, do you accept, you know, that the Sultan Muhammad Shah, the, the, you know, the Imam before him was weighed in gold, you know, uh, means uh, the equivalent of his weight, you know, the people gave, uh, you know, uh, like in gold. He was weighed in gold, literally. Uh, do you deny it or accept it? Like people paid money, you know, like charity or zakat or the song, whatever you name it, uh, the equivalent of his weight. Doubt, uh, doubt he, I think he heard your question. I think he don't want to answer. He will answer when Camel finishes point. I think he, this is what he want to do. Okay. Uh, go on, go on, go. Okay. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So the reason why this is dubious or murky. So if you go to Forbes, they estimate his fortune to be about a billion dollars. Right, and they say horse raising enthusiast owns 900 thoroughbreds at stud farms in Ireland, France, holds stakes at Joffs, one of Britain's largest horse auction horses. Blah 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 blah. And they give you details on his on his wealth. If you go to the Wikipedia page, it estimates Aga Khan's net worth has been estimated at 13.3 billion. So Khalid is right; nobody actually knows how much money he has, but he's certainly very very wealthy. Now, when you ask him, how do you know that he's not using this money for his personal wealth? Actually, he says, nobody really knows, but the reason I say he doesn't is because the imam told me so. Is there something that you can point to, Khalil, besides the imam saying so, uh, that proves or demonstrates without a shadow of a doubt that he's not using 12.5% uh, for his personal uh, gain, even though you think it's okay for me? Uh, there's no proof either way. Thank so you. There's no, no problem. Proof. Thank you very much. So it's so so you. There's no evidence that someone has come and said, "Oh, he's taking it for his personal wealth," and there's no evidence otherwise. Perfect. The only Thank you. The evidence we have is the imam's word. Thank you very much. We can trust it. Okay, but now now can I can I continue or go for it? Gonna, you answered my question. 
uh, straightforwardly. Thank you very much. Please okay. go, go on. Please go. Yeah. Okay. So two things. Number one. All right. Um, the, I have to repeat because I was I was cut off and I lost my train of thought on this. So in modern times, and the Imam has said this multiple times. You can find it. He says it online, and I can also tell you that there is verification of this. Okay. Uh, when the current Imam succeeded to the Imamate from his grandfather, he did not uh, inherit the personal wealth of his grandfather. So already the succession to the prior Imam in the will, the personal wealth of the Imam was already separate from the institutional wealth of the Imamate. Okay, so the institutional wealth of the imamate would be things like, for example, who owns uh, all those um, hospitals, schools, everything done by the Aga Khan Development Network? Who's the owner of that? That was not part of the personal wealth of the prior imam. Right, that was part of the assets of the imamate. Similarly. All the uh, Jamaat, all the Jamaat Khanas that are in the world, they're in the name of, of somebody or something. But they were not owned personally by the prior Imam. They were owned by the Imamate. And that personal wealth of the prior Imam, so things that he did own personally, like his house, for example, those were primarily inherited and distributed to his sons and his, his widow, his wife. The current Aga Khan, who was his grandson, he didn't inherit all that personal wealth. He only got the share that a grandson would get. But the current Aga Khan, because he inherited the imamate, okay, he inherited the control of all the assets of the imamate, such as the ownership of all the community property and things like that. So although we don't have an audit to show you the separation, in actual fact, the separation is real because that separation uh, was done in the will. If there were no, if these assets, hey, Salil, can I come in now? Thank you very much. Can no, I come no, in? No, I'm allowed to talk. Khalil, I mean, I'm allowed. Khalil, please let Khalil finish. Please, please, please. K Khalil, okay. continue on, please. Thank you. Yeah. So, if the personal assets of the Aga Khan were commingled with the assets of the Imamate, and if they were all actually held by him personally then the, the current imam would have inherited control over no imamate assets. They would all have been in the personal in the personal bin, but they were not. All of the community property, the treasury of all the zakat, the dason, all the offerings, that was not actually in the personal wealth of the Aga Khan. So they were not inter okay. they were not inherited by his personal heirs. Do, do, you, do, you, do you understand that? What I don't understand is something you said about 30 seconds ago. You said the Aga Khan owns community assets. That's a contradiction. How no, can somebody own community I, assets? I didn't say that, my friend. I didn't oh, say uh, that. Can you, can, can, just for the audience, just for the audience, are you sure you didn't say that? Yeah. I'm are you sure, sure you didn't say the Aga Khan owns the community assets? I said that the community assets are not part of the personal wealth of the Aga Khan. They're part of the wealth of the imamate. They're what you call institutions. Is the Aga Khan the imam? Yes, he's the imam. Okay, can but you square that? Of course I can square that. There's a difference between the person of the imam and the institution that he currently holds and controls. So Isn't it the, the same institution... Thing, isn't that like Jesus? He's 100% God and 100% man. He's 100% imam and he's 100% no, person. I, I mean, like, no, no, there's a difference. Yeah, so yeah. here's the thing, right? The, here's why they're different. So the person of the Aga Khan is going to die, just like every Ismaili imam as a personal individual has passed away. But what they pass to the next person is the office of imamate. And the office of imamate owns its own assets. The office of imam is a legally uh, recognized so, no, entity that's good. in Khalil, the world. Bro, this is right? good. This is good. So it's like a father passing a corporation onto his son. I mean, it's not a corporation, but it is a different... I mean, for all entity. intents and purposes, it is. It's an investment firm. So it's like a father passing an investment firm onto his son. 
Well, it's a le- it's not an investment firm, right? It's a religious office. It's I mean, an investment firm. Khalil, hold on. An investment firm is a is a is a collective of companies, etc., to generate a return. Right. Again, so the, so the, it's the, like the, a father, the, Khalil. It's like a father no, passing no, to his son an investment firm. No, it's not like that. That's How's it different? Right because you said okay. you said the imam, you because said what. You, you said the imam because, passes the, down to the next imam, all these assets. Yeah. The same thing, a father passes Khalil. to his son a company with all these assets. No, but, but Khalil, who, who's, the chairman, who's the chairman Who's the chairman or president of the Aga Khan Foundation? That's a, that's, no, a each different, that's, a different, that would, that's a different question, right? That's a different question. So the institution of the imamate, unlike a corporation, a corporation's entire reason for existing... Khalil is to Khalil, give a return don't, don't, on investment to shareholders. Right, Khalil, don't, don't laugh at the audience. Be, the institution of the imami is an inanimate object. It's like saying who owns this company? Oh, uh, uh, some, some I mean, inanimate object, a rock a company, owns it. No, 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 but a company. A person owns the thing, Okay. right? So Something has to own it. Yeah. Are you saying that imam doesn't own this? It's not an asset. Horse, horse racing companies, airline companies, okay, meat companies. Okay, Yachts, they're not assets. Own, does, somebody, does somebody own a country? Khalil, does somebody own a boat? Does somebody own an airline somebody, company? Does, does somebody, somebody own a meat packing no, no, company? Does somebody, does somebody own the presidency? Is the presidency an asset? That Khalil, Khalil, Khalil. No, does somebody own... Khalil, 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 Khalil. Does somebody own... Khalil, just FYI, I'll tell you how it works. There's no, a, there's I a mean, few I different... Think you know I'll tell you how it works. Khalil, I'll tell you how it works. Khalil, give me a sec. Khalil, I'll give you a sec. Give me a sec, give me a sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, you got to let me speak for a little bit. Khalil, I'll tell you how it works. I'll tell you how it works. Works. You're not, you're not no, 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 Khalil, Khalil, Khalil. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. A company, a company, Khalil, can either be private or it can be public. This is how it works. So you can go like Coca Cola, for example. You can go on and you can buy shares in Coca Cola. Everybody here can go online. They can go to Vanguard or uh, Fidelity and they can buy shares in Coca Cola. There's private companies that you can't buy shares in because they're owned by one or a small group of people, and it's within their hands. You can't buy. Sh- this is it. If you know of a third option, you can tell me because I'm not aware of any. Is the Aga Khan Foundation a publicly traded company? The Aga Khan Foundation is a non for profit. So you're telling me airline companies, meatpacking companies, yachts, all these assets, how can a yacht be non profit? Because, uh, again, <laughs> this is my point, right? You haven't really caught on here to what I was saying. The Aga Khan Development Network is a set of agencies. They're a non-profit. They're not. They're not corporation, right? Khalil, how can a yacht be a non-profit thing? Because the yacht is not owned by the Aga Khan. Developer. So who owns it? The Aga Khan personally owns it. Ah, it's thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Just like the rest it's of them, of right? No, that this is my. I think. I think. I, I think we made the question. point here. Why, Khalil, I have to not repeat question? myself. I just spent like ten minutes explaining to you how the Aga Khan's personal assets are distinct from the imamah's assets, and and you just ignored what Khalil, I said. Khalil, and you're Khalil, giving me examples Khalil, Khalil, that are sort of not relevant to that distinction. Khalil, Khalil, any company, somebody owns it. If it's Coca Cola, shareholders own it. If it's Again, a private company, somebody yeah, owns it. I'm not aware. I. I'd love to. I'd love to. This would be the first time I hear of a company o- being owned by an inanimate object, by a fictitious yeah, uh, concept. Even the head of the uh, okay. Aga Khan so, Foundation is, uh, you know, Aga Khan. It's, uh, okay, you okay, okay, yeah, say. I, I, I have a request, Riz. Riz, why, why is this stage hostile against me? Why do we have? No, I'm so, Khalil, I don't think. Khalil, I don't think. I don't think nobody's hostile. I think people are just. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dawood is an ex Ismaili who polemicizes against the Ismailis all the time. So you no, no. Dawood is a is a Muslim, mashallah. Uh, he prays okay. five times a day. He pays the cat. He goes to Hajj. Did I did I disrespect? Did I say any word? Guys, 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 gu
So, Khalil, when you say uh, there are two things, you know, when you say that the Aga Khan Foundation is a non-profit organization, but it has a head, you know, uh, Serena Hotel, many things are run under this Aga Khan Foundation. So you, now you mean to say that the Serena Hotel is a non-profit organization. Second thing, I asked you the question, why was Aga Khan third, you know, he was weighed in gold, uh, paid by the money uh, of the Ismailis, you know. Uh, and in another another case in Africa, he was weighed in diamond. Why? Why? What was the case? If you say that uh, you know, like uh, uh, this money was not from the Ismailis, what do you have to say about it? Thank you. Okay, so now there's several questions on the table that I I need to get to answer, and I don't want to be interrupted. If I'm interrupted one time in my response. I will leave this conversation. Is that so a deal? You know, I, I put Dawood down, mm -hmm. as you noticed. I put him yes, down. But it, do we I'm have a deal? How much time do you need, Khalil? How much time do you need? I'm mean, going to need a lot of time. There's like three, four questions here. So, I mean... Is it going to be like a lecture? Like was, or? No, no, but hold on. If you, Camel, if you want a, a time limit to everything, you have to tell me before. And then if we have time limits, it has to be one question at a time. Furthermore, so three minutes. It, three minutes, Khalil. Is that cool? Let's try it, but again, I might need more. So, okay. Let me begin with Dawood's question. Okay. So, okay. in South Asia, and you can look this up, it is a custom to celebrate the reigns of different rulers and leaders. Okay, and it is a well-established custom in South Asia that the followers of that person or the admirers of that person, or the benefactors of that person, they actually weigh them in gold or silver or whatnot. That was part of the South Asian culture in India. And what happened with, and you can look this up, there are several sort of Indian princes, maharajas and things, uh, even the Mughal leaders, the Mughal rulers on certain jubilees, they had these weighing ceremonies as well. This is just historical fact. So, um, given that this was an, it's a distinctly Indian custom of weighing the ruler on a jubilee uh, to celebrate the occasion, the followers of the imam in India came to the imam and said, we want to celebrate your jubilee, that a jubilee meaning, meaning the 25th year of the imam's imamat, or the 50th year of his imamat, or the 60th year, or the 70th year. These are called jubilees. The concept of a jubilee goes back to the Bible. So the followers of the imam wanted to show their appreciation and love for Aga Khan III, because the Aga Khan III did a great deal for his community, and he's loved by his community. So the followers based on the custom in their culture, they requested to do a weighing ceremony for the imam on these jubilees, okay? So what the community did is at a voluntary level, people donated money to get, they donated money, the equivalent of what the imam would weigh in terms of gold or diamonds or platinum, depending on the jubilee, okay? So all that money that was donated for the Jubilee, okay, to actually purchase the gold diamonds in the weighing, in each Jubilee, that money was given back to the community. And it was used to build schools, banks, insurance companies, credit unions, and this sort of thing. And we actually have to this day the different institutions, they're known as you know, Diamond Jubilee Trust Bank, for example, and in East Africa, you have hospitals, things that were created from those donations. So what this did effectively is it channeled funds from the wealthier members of the Ismaili community, it was channeled through the Jubilee and used to create hospitals, schools, banks, cooperatives, insurance companies, 
which directly benefited not just the Ismaili community, but the people who lived in that area. So this was simply a way of redistributing wealth from the wealthy in the community to those who are less fortunate by creating permanent institutions that still exist to this day. Uh, many, many decades after these ceremonies happened. Okay. I, I, thank you. Thank, let Camel come in. Thank you, Khalil. Yeah, exactly. I'd be interested to hear how insurance companies uh, benefit the people. Maybe we can have a separate conversation about that. But Khalil, I have a couple questions for you. If you can open your mic, we'd appreciate it. I'm sorry, what? No problem. Just if you can keep your mic open. Do Khalil, you want my mic do you, open? No problem. Just so we can talk. Do you pray five times a day, Khalil? No, we pray three times a day, okay. mandatory, and then we have no other problem. prayers that we do in addition to that, but those are not no. mandatory. No problem. When you pray, do you pray uh, uh, with, you know, facing Mecca? No, we don't have to face Mecca. Okay, no problem. Thank you very much. Do you fast in Ramadan from sunrise to sunset the entire Many, month? Some Ismailis do, some Ismailis don't. It's a, are you required it's a, to? No, it's an optional for voluntary practice. Okay. Are you required to make Hajj to Mecca? No, we're not required. It's an optional practice. Okay. Is your Imam Masum? Yes. Okay. Uh, the last question that I have for you. When you hear the Imam's name, is, is prostration due? Yes. You know, we don't literally okay. do it. We sort of do a gesture. Many of us do a gesture with your hands to show that you're prostrating. Okay. Very good. But again, that prostration due on his mention is a Quranic idea. I understand. Surah 32, verse 15. I understand. I understand. Khalil, <clears throat> by what right do you call yourself a Muslim? Just simply because you said some words and you identify as such. I follow the definition of Muslim that comes from my imams. Okay. So I've simply repeated what the current Aga Khan has said. He has said publicly many, many times, especially in places where there's been a lot of takfir, anyone who professes the shahada is a Muslim, and you cannot declare that person a non-Muslim. Okay. Now, one other thing. Very good, I, I, I think I didn't. I, I think, didn't get to. I didn't get I to think, address. I didn't get to address your corporation point, right? Oh yes, so, I'll go back to that. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So here's the thing, right? Uh, you are saying that an inanimate object owns property and assets, right? You're saying that you find that puzzling. Yeah, Khalil, l let me make it simple for you. You can either have uh, a company that's a uh, uh, owned by shareholders or a private company. There's no two ways about that. Somebody okay. owns it. So the Im but the imamat, the imamat is not a registered corporation. It's not an LLC or any of that. Right. It's an office. Yeah, it's an office, and it has a legal existence recognized of by world governments. But it's not – so it's not a company because it doesn't have shareholders, right? It's I understand It's a legal that. entity in itself. I right? understand that. Like the office of a president. I understand right? that. So the has, person that sits a, in that office yeah, owns yeah. owns the uh, owns the wealth of that company or whatever no, you want no, to call it. it would, no, he doesn't own it. Okay, so uh -huh. if I become the CEO of Microsoft tomorrow, right? No, no, CEO, no. The CEO is the CEO doesn't own the company, Khalil. You know that's this. my that that is my point. That's my point. So the the Ismaili Imame, which is a legal entity, Khalil. you can look up. No, no, hold on. Let me finish, my friend. Like Go you brought it. this point up. You've made some claims. No, no, we're gonna you're have some fun on this. Go ahead. You're genuinely puzzled. No, no, I know exactly what I'm talking about. You're puzzled. Go ahead. Well. I mean, if you know, then why am I here? Then if you already know everything, why am I okay, here? Okay, so I'll tell you why. You gave you gave the the no 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 on this particular thing. You gave the example okay. of Microsoft. Microsoft yeah. Khalil has shareholders. You can go online now and you can buy in Vanguard agree, shares of Microsoft. I agree, but the Ismaili Imame doesn't have shareholders. The okay, Ismaili so who owns Imame, it then? Okay, the Ismaili Imame is a legal entity. In itself, it's not owned by anyone. It's like asking, like, who owns a country? So, so who Does owns that, that yacht? Sense? Who owns that yacht? Who owns the estates? Who owns the companies? They just so, okay, they're out there floating me, around. Nobody owns yeah, them. Yeah, let me tell you. I will tell you this right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So number one, yacht. Let's talk about yacht. So Let's go for it. The Aga Khan, 
Aga Khan has two yachts. One is a personal yacht that he uses for his own use. Uh -huh. Okay? The other and he owns yacht, it. Yeah, he owns it. So that's not, that's in the name okay. of... So he does own it. Uh, yeah, that's in his okay. personal name. Okay? That's not owned by the Ismaili Imamate. Same with Aga Khan Studs, the horse breeding operation. That's uh -huh. not owned by the Ismaili Imamate. And we can prove it because the personal owner of the horse breeding operation was the Aga Khan's grandfather, the prior okay. imam. When the grandfather, the prior imam died, all the horses and stables, they, they went not to the new imam, they went to the imam's father because they were personally inherited. So they were a part of personal property, not so they do imam own property. So I'm saying that the imamate, the institution of imamate, which is a recognized legal entity, that uh -huh. imamate doesn't own the yacht, the personal yacht. It doesn't own the horse race, the horse breeding operation. It doesn't own the investment yacht where the Aga Khan has invested over 10 years to build a technology so, so Khalil, the, that's not a personal it, according to, for, I know you've so, been going on a while, so just the, let me get so in the, as well. No, 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 Khalil, no, 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 I mean, Khalil, Khalil, we have to be able to talk. Time. Remember when I talked, I said, let's open the mic and let's talk. No, I didn't give no, you a lecture, you, but, right? No, so no, also, you, let's you, talk you, a little bit. I know, but when I ask, you don't go on forever. Like, it's a brief brief, and then we come back, we go back and forth. Who owns this? No, Camel, you said, who owns this? Who owns that? And then you cut me off. Okay. No, no, no. I, I, I'm seriously lost. I'm trying to probe you with questions to get a clear yeah, picture. Yeah, but you're, you can probe all you want, but then you don't let the person answer the question. So no, no, no. Like oh, my gosh. Like this. Khalil, Khalil. Khalil. Uh, give me a sec. Khalil, just as an example, Forbes estimates that the Aga Khan has a billion dollars. Is this billion dollars his? I don't know, where, he... they're I don't know where their estimate is even from, but Forbes has okay. not written a word in there about the distinction between the Ismaili Imamate assets and the Aga Khan's personal assets. My guess is that they conflated everything into one. That's probably what they did. Uh, what okay. Forms, what's your estimate based on? But okay. in reality, right, the Ismaili Imamate owns assets just like in the caliphate, right, the zakah paid to a caliph that did not go into the caliph's personal property, right? It went into the treasury of the caliphate, but the caliph controls the treasury, but he doesn't own it. The caliphate as an institution owns the treasury. So it's okay. the same thing here, right? So, so the $200 million dollar yacht, for instance. Yes. That's the tech. So that $200 million is an investment in yacht technology. No, no, it's a I'm yacht. Not. It's an actual yacht. Like floating yeah, on the ocean. It, it is a yacht, but you know... The uh, we'll of, an island. Uh, again, can I, what, can I answer? What are these luxuries for, Khalil? These luxuries, yeah. what are they for for the Aga Khan? What are they for? Okay, I'll tell you. So the $200 million yacht is not a personal luxury. He doesn't actually use that yacht. Uh, according you, to the, uh, James Edition, which is a newspaper, he does. I can put the link above if you like. He uses a personal yacht, but that's not the two hundred million dollar yacht. Look up the names of these yachts; they have different. The Alam Shar, yes. There's many yachts we know, Khalil, but the two hundred yes, million so, dollar one. So Alam, Alam, Shar. Alam Shar, no, hold on, hold on. Alam Shar, okay, is a speed yacht that the Aga Khan has developed through R and D, okay, and that is a business investment. It's literally an R and D project. We, people who develop yachts as R&D, they don't use that personally. A personal yacht is a yacht that you use like when you go swimming, you go on vacation. So it's nobody uses the $200 million dollar yacht, it's just R&D. It just sits there. Yeah, it's, a it's, a yacht, it's a yacht technology, so if you, if you look up if you look up... No, no, Khalil, it's a yacht. It works, it's a physical yacht. Of course it's a yacht, but it is a business investment. It's not a personal use yacht, and that's a very important... So nobody's using here. it. According to J James' edition, which I can link if you like, Aga Khan uses it. Again, link it. Go. Sure. Give me one sec. So again, the Aga Khan's yacht that he uses for personal use for vacations is not Alamshar. 
Okay, his his personal use yacht is called Zarkava. So it's two different yachts. The personal use yacht is not was not developed through two hundred million of R and D. The the R and D yacht is only created to set new speed records in yachting technology. It's literally the creation of yachting technology. Okay, so there's many yachts. We get that, Khalil. Uh, Riz, I sent you the link. You can post it. This is the James Edition $200 million Alam Sher yacht, which is apparently a science R&D experiment. But if you but, can post it, Riz. But it, again, if you know anything about yachting technologies, this is a standard type of yachting business where you actually invest money, you invest in design, and you try to build the fastest yacht. And those fastest yachts are not right. for personal use. The owner doesn't use that. Right, so the Aga Khan who's meant to be guiding us is investing in yachts. I, I, I think I, I kind of get it. Well, the Aga Khan owns businesses. There's nothing against owning businesses, especially when the Aga Khan has to cover the expenses of various institutions, right? He, his wealth empowers him to do that. His wealth has been a benefit to him and to us. Oh, okay. So of course, okay. if you how, want Khalil, to be, I'm interested. If, how, if you like, want how, to be how... self-sustaining in the world, right. and you don't want to be genocided like the Ismaili Imams and the community were. Yeah, the like, like the assassins uh, genocided. We know, like the assassins just genocided. The assassins the genocide didn't pieces. genocide anybody. You guys genocided us. So now we're going to. Do you want me to read you from history books? Here, actually, since you mentioned that, this yeah, is interesting. Yeah, I can, I can read you history books too, okay? Yep. But anyway... If I you like, we can go to that or we can stick on this topic. I, I so, wanna, Khalil, I wanna, I wanna Khalil, get to the Khalil. Point. No, 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 you keep shifting now. You no, 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 we're sticking on the boat. We're sticking on the yachts. Yeah, okay. So, so I'm re I, put, I, I put it above. Part. You can click on it. The Aga Khan's $200 million super yacht snafu. So this Alam Shir $200 million okay, yacht. So where does it say that he is this personal use yacht? Where does it say that? It actually says... It's it literally efficient. says the Aga Khan's, like, that's how English work, the Aga Khan's $200 yeah, million. Dollar because as if he commissioned the R&D for the yacht. So, of course, he, I, but I said he personally owns it, but it's not the same as a personal use yacht. Like okay, so he personally owns it, that's fine. I get it, like yeah, he has he many yachts, he chooses it. the other one, because but he owns this one too. Because it's, a business because it's a business investment. That's what these speed yachts are. Nobody uses a speed yacht to go on vacation. Mm -hmm. They are pers they are business investments. That's the point okay. I'm making. So okay, does, no does the Aga Khan own businesses? Yes, he does. The horse breeding is also a very good business, and it's a very it's a very successful business. So the Aga Khan is personally wealthy. Right. Yes, he is. I'm not going to deny that. But again, I don't see this as problematic. On the contrary, the Aga Khan's personal wealth has enabled his work and his influence to reach very very far. And as the imam of the time, we actually want him to be personally wealthy. So he is safe. He is not um, beholden to anybody. There's no issue or expense where the imam will not have enough assets to cover it. It's because of his personal wealth that our imam can just make a phone call and talk to basically any world leader he wants. Okay, it's because of his personal wealth that he can go visit countries and get all these different countries to contribute to the AKDN, the Aga Khan Humanitarian Development Network. It's because of his personal wealth that he could get different countries. I like get it. The UK, Khalil, he does a lot with his money and country. his yachts and his boats. Yeah, so, I understand. So money, money is I power. It. Money is I know, power. I know. And as yeah, yeah, yeah. a mom, it's in, He's a very it's wealthy man. Yeah, so, so yeah, we money, get it. Is we get it. money is power. Money is power. And we think the imam, the world is better off if the imam of the time has more power and influence, not less. Right, I get it. Can I ask a question, Khalil? Khalil, can I ask a quick question? Of, instead of, you know, Jeff Bezos and whoever, because we think he's a masum imam. So the masum imam will always do the best with his wealth. We don't look at his wealth and say, oh, oh my God, it's so corrupt. No, the masum imam should have more wealth. It's more beneficial for the whole world if the Masum Imam has wealth. The yeah. Masum Imam shouldn't be a beggar who has to go ask for financial favors when the community or him needs help. But Quick going question, back to the, hold on, just going back to the point, right? So all these personal things that Camel asked about, all the 
independent investments that the Aga Khan has, those are his personal investments, and he has said this. Yeah, perfect. And They're his personal know. investments. Khalid, this is all right. we're trying to yeah. say, that this man yeah. owns a fortune. He has billions of yeah. dollars. He has yachts, well, he has food again, companies, you know, airline you know, companies. Aga Khan Aga Khan Aga Khan yeah, yeah, He's Khalid, that's fine. Wealthy. But so, the Khalid, my that question, his, just his a five-second question. His personal assets are not commingled with the assets of the Ismaili imami. How do you so know that? The How do you know that? Because the imam says it. Okay. <laughs> I, I trust it. And because of the will, because of the actual, Khalil, because Khalil, the actual inheritance. Khalil, the actual Khalil, inheritance. Khalil, no, hold on. Khalil, no, no, no. Camel, I, I get camel, it. I get it. You've camel, spoken a long camel, time, Khalid, and I was quiet. Camel. Camel, Khalil. camel, camel. Khalil, you've been rambling for a either. very long time Listen, and I've been camel, patiently listening. Camel, Khalil, just come on, wrap it up, wrap it up. Land your plane, Khalil, land your plane. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Camel, don't come on. Get, Khalil, you can play this game. You've been rambling for about five minutes and I listened to you patiently. You so just fired hold on a second. Five questions. I'm answering your I questions. didn't fire off any questions. I literally opened my mic. Just give me a second. You, you give asked me a, second. a bunch of questions. So I, no, no, no. I said, I'm so your imam owns questions. all these investments. You said yes. Khalil, no. just let yeah, he Camel come in. Then you come in. I want to I wanna summarize quickly just because we have a nice uh, no, bit of I, audience here. And then we're going to go to Dawood for a second. Khalil, Khalil, Khalil. Okay, Khalil, just stick with me for a second. If you summarize, just take it easy. Take a breath. Take a breath. Take a breath. And just take it easy. If you take it easy. If you summarize. If you summarize, then I'm summarizing Riz. Do you hear that? No, 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 no. We're having a discussion what, here. What? No, Everybody no, 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 will no, no, get no. a chance to speak. Having, Khalil, you got you got to let people speak. Turn off turn yeah. off your mic for a sec. Just for a sec. If just for a sec. A just to prove that you can actually turn off your mic. Just okay, I, I, I'll turn it off, but I have one so request. Thank you very much. Just turn it off. I thank have you. one request. I don't know why, again, the stage is being stacked with other people. It's not. So there's literally there's like two you, people here talking you. to you, Khalil. If this no, is your no, impression of stack, then, then you I must want... be easily intimidated. Just relax, turn off your mic for a moment, and just why listen. Do you need, why do you need the extra help, Camel? Nobody needs help. Nobody's talking to you except me, Khalil. Of course, you clear. Uh, that's not true. People have asked other questions. Okay, Khalil, so he's, he's gone, gone now. He's, well, he's down. He'll come back up later. Okay, so you summary and I'll summary. Go Brother Camel, go ahead. Yeah, one sec. Give me one sec. Clearly, we appreciate you coming out uh, to discuss. Is everything's going well? Thank you. Uh, can Can I share a link too, or no? Or only only one person gets to share links. Okay, so I'm going to make this quick, inshallah, because I, I do have to go in a couple of minutes, but let's, uh, okay, I'll stay as long can as I, I can. Can I share a link too, or no? I'll stay as long as I can. You shared, shared four links. I haven't got to share my link. Am I allowed to Khalil, share Khalil, you can share. We can send it to Rizr, we'll put it up, no problem. Khalil, for the audience, because we have 112 people in the room now, I just want them to be clear about your beliefs, just so they know what you believe. And Khalil, I ask you, if anything that I say here is incorrect, feel free to interrupt me. Right. So the first thing, Khalil doesn't pray five times a day. Even this, when he does pray, his three times he doesn't even face Mecca. This is one. Two, he doesn't fast in Ramadan. From sunrise to sunset the whole month he doesn't fast. In fact, to him it's not even necessary. Three, they don't perform hajj. They don't do hajj in, in Mecca. Hajj is getting a glimpse of the imam. This is three. Four, they believe that this imam who owns all these the, this massive wealth, um, however you want to discuss it, he has all these, all this wealth, all these assets, that he's masum. In other words, he's infallible on matters of religion. This is four. And five, that this specific individual is a reflection of God's attributes. And as, as such, when you hear his name, his name, prostration is due. It's worthy of prostrating. This is a summary, I think, what we've understood from Khalil's beliefs. And I think this is it. I don't really think we need to discuss anything further. I think that's that's enough for the audience to understand what Khalil believes. And then based on these beliefs, the audience can make their decision, is this man uh, a Muslim or not? And is he authorized to speak on matters of religion and interpreting the Qur'an? Khalas, I think this is all that's needed. All right. Did I get anything wrong with your beliefs there, Khalil, as I went down the list? I tried to be well, faithful I, to what you believe. Uh, yeah, I, th I think you did. Okay. Can I ask one Thank question, you. Dr. Khalid, if, it, if it's okay, yes. just on the last okay. minute? Okay, yeah, so you go ahead, and then I, I get to respond with my summary, right, or clarifications. And Riz, can you pull up my link?
Yes, I've tried. Shabazz, can you please put it up? Because I don't know how to put it up the link. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, I yeah, brought yeah, you the yeah, browser. Don't worry, I am. Uh, don't worry. I'll He's going to put it up, I promise. So, Hakan, why don't you ask yeah. and then I'll respond to what you, you, you and then Hakan. Yeah, sure, sure. You might need a bit more time depending on the question. Yeah, it might be technical. Like, I don't think the audience members really gonna understand it, but it's it's based on what like Camel said, like the fifth thing that he's a reflection of God's attributes. So so just knowing what, um, like your position on attributes and all that. I mean, is it a reflection of the one? Because he, he doesn't really have attributes, right? So so then is he like a reflection of the intellect or the soul or something or what? Okay, sure. How would you understand this? Yeah, yeah. So I said you weren't. Maybe you weren't here, right? But for us, the attributes, as as attributes, they don't exist in the divine essence, because God, for us, is simple, has no parts of any kind. So for us, and others in this tradition, other Neoplatonists, the attributes, as attributes, exist in the first created being, which is we, we call the first intellect. So yeah. the imam is a reflection, the imam's soul is a reflection of the first intellect. Okay, okay, sounds good. All right, yeah, so, I mean, but it's his, just, his, so here's my problem with that, though, because Camel said that he's a reflection of God's attributes, but you guys don't think the intellect is God. Yeah, so, we don't, so that's so, why. Like, do you disagree with that, though? Correct, yeah. So, so, so would Ismaili say that he is a reflection of God's attributes? Is that, like, a proposition that, like, data firm? Or would they say, no, no, like, the word God there is, I, I is misleading? That, I think I think the the the, the issue is that the the term the idafa you could say like the attributes of God, but they could be interpreted two ways. Either uh, the attributes are part of God, right, or the attributes are owned by God, right. He is the owner of them, but they're not part of Him. Just like you know, the Kaaba is the house of God, or the the spirit that's created in the Quran is often called the Ru of him, his rule, our rule. So in those uh, phraseologies, the thing, the first term of the idafa is not part of the second term of the idafa. It's just sort of owned by it. So this is how we would interpret the phrase God's attributes. God, God created these attributes as actual qualities within the first intellect. They're not distinct uh, things or qualities in God. So the imam, is a reflection of the first intellect, according to our theology. All right, thank you. I want to go back to the audience. Oh. Okay, so uh, going back to what Camel said, right? So what Camel hasn't explained or hasn't articulated is why Ismaili practices are different. Ismaili practices are different because the Ismaili understanding of God's authority after Prophet Muhammad is different. For us, the interpretation of God's guidance, whether it's Quran, Sunnah, and even in nature, the interpretation of God's guidance is the right of one individual who is appointed by God through the Prophet and through subsequent appointed Imams. And that one individual alone has an infallible interpretation of Islam. It's different from saying that a whole bunch of fallible ulama are going to interpret the Quran and the Sunnah. So because Ismailis don't recognize the authority of fallible ulama, we only recognize the authority of divinely appointed imams who come from a hereditary lineage. And the Aga Khan is the current successor of that lineage of imama, which goes all the way back to Ali, whom we believe was appointed by the Prophet. So the Aga Khan's interpretation of Islam, like every imam before him, updates specific formats of worship uh, and law to the time and place. So Ismailis do pray, but we don't pray five times. Ismailis do fast, but we don't do the same form of fasting that other Muslims do. We do have a pilgrimage. Question for you on that. It's a different form of pilgrimage. Question for you on that. Okay, can I let me Bro, I mean, come on, man. Okay, are you up here to lecture or are you up here to discuss? No, you just, no, but you just lectured. My goodness. You just. Bro, you we can go back and listen to the recording of this and we'll, we'll uh, measure how much you talk versus how much I talk. No problem. Khalil, Khalil, Khalil. 
I'm not. I know you're not done, man. But if you you, if I don't interrupt, you'd go on forever. Tell me how it's gonna work. You're gonna ask the question, and then yeah, yeah, because we have yeah, we're gonna dialogue, Khalil. You and I. It's no problem. Don't don't be intimidated. We can discuss. I'm not being intimidated. Okay, then you should have no problem answering the question. And this is easy. This is, by the way, an easy question. The person who interrupts. Just have a smooth dialogue. It's it's okay. Yeah, it's easy. Don't worry about it. It's like we're just gonna talk, Khalil. You and I. Khalil, you and I. We're just gonna have a nice conversation. Nice I should be allowed to finish. I should be allowed to finish my sentence. I, I know. Ten, Khalil. Ten, ten, Khalil, twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. Yeah, yeah. Take seconds. thirty seconds. Okay. Camel, ask the question, but then I'm, I get to respond, right? I mean, does you need five minutes to respond? Ten minutes? I mean, twenty. I, mean, I barely took one minute, and you cut me off. All right, just ask the question. Then you have a dialogue. Have a smooth dialogue. Yeah, let's guys. just let's just talk. Come on, come on. I mean, it's, it's not, we're not in a, a, in, a, in a setting where you ask a question and you have to give a whole lecture to respond. It's just basic stuff. Um, Khalil, when, when exactly did they make the change that you don't need to pray anymore? Do you know the year approximately? Because as far as I know, the Prophet prayed five times a day. If you're talking, you're on mute. Khalil, are you there? Yeah, as far as I know, the Prophet also, he did Hajj in Mecca. He never did Hajj to an Aga Khan or Imam to get a glimpse of him. I'm just wondering, when did this change? So these changes have happened throughout Ismaili history. Okay, no problem. Right? But we don't deny that the Prophet prescribed prayer, fasting, pilgrimage in a certain form. We don't deny that. We just, just don't follow it, form. right? You just don't follow it. We, 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 again, Camel says we don't pray. We do pray. We pray in a different format. No, that's fine. That's, so, but Khalil, that's but, an important but, distinction. Right, right so but they changed deny. the format of prayer, right? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, no problem. We, we, we don't hide so, that. But no, that's fine. So, the imam, it's the imam who changes it. Just no, only that's fine. The imam has the authority. I mean, it's not fine, but I understand what you mean. Yeah, so, so you're, you're your, essentially saying the imam has the authority to change how these practices are done. Absolutely, the imam. Okay. Just like your ulama, but your ulama, you follow the rulings. You follow the fiqh of your ulama. Khalid, have we you changed prayer? Have we changed Hajj? Have we changed this no, stuff? No, we haven't. And there's a whole bunch of things that you guys have innovated that you had no authority to do. Like what? Khalil, we pray five times a day. We do Hajj. Yeah, this is what this is what Islam is. You came. You redefined. Hold on, hold on, Khalil, 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 Khalil. Khalil, you redefined what Hajj is. You redefined what Hajj is. You redefined what Salah is. You guys have ikhtilaf. You have ikhtilaf even on how to pray. Yeah, yeah. Whether you put your hands down or you raise your hands. No, I agree. You say Bismillah aloud or not? Yeah, yeah. But Khalil, do we all pray five times a day? It doesn't matter. Do you say the Bismillah? <laughs> of course it matters. Khalil, you say Khalil. The, but it matters if you say, do you say Khalil, Bismillah? Khalil, we all pray and five times a day. It and then the variances that are there? The wrong, if you okay. pray the wrong way, if, you're, if you pray the wrong way, it doesn't matter if you pray ten times a day. So do you say the Bismillah aloud or not? Khalil, there's four hand? schools of Madhab, and last time yeah. I checked, all of them okay. are acceptable. They all tolerate, or they all okay. the changes who, are all acceptable. Now, Khalil, okay. Khalil, we're going to go back to the answer. issue. Is this no, 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 Khalil? No, no. I, Khalil, I, yes, yes, yes. Khalil, 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 then, go for it. then Camel asks the question. Be fair, be fair. Come here, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So Camel, do you recognize uh, the, the fact that there's ikhtilaf on matters of fiqh across your four mud hubs? Yes. Okay. How much ikhtilaf is there? The ikhtilaf goes back to the sunnah. There's evidences in the sunnah for the ikhtilaf. No, but how much ikhtilaf is there? On prayer, there's a, there's differences. Do you raise your hand? Do you uh, uh, do you pray with your hands? So there's a khtilaf. <laughs> now, Khalil, let me let me let me make a statement to you though. We all pray five times a day. We pray fajr. We pray dhuhr. We pray asr. We pray maghrib, and we pray isha. Yeah, but you don't pray the same way. Khalil, <laughs> Khalil, I think I answered your question. We all pray fajr. No, we all no, pray no, dhuhr. We all pray maghrib. You made a claim. You said all four madhabs are acceptable, equally acceptable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do you know that? Who established yeah, they all the four madhabs? 
As the difference is, go back to the sunnah. So the proofs that, here's here's maybe something you know, but uh, you're just trying to play dumb with Khalil, is that the difference is, go back to the sunnah. So each of the proofs that the imams have uh, for the prayer goes back to the sunnah itself. And Al-Albani, he has a book on how to make salah, and he takes it from the sunnah. So the differences are from the sunnah itself. So you okay. know. So now Khalil... Be, no, 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 I'm not done. We're talking about you now. Are you gonna no, 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 we're, we're going to go back to... Back, Khalil, go no, back no, and no, forth. No, 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 go back and forth. You asked a question? Let, can we ask a yeah, question? Yeah, yeah. You asked a question, I answered it. Khalil, Khalil. Now, here's the difference. Here's the difference. It's been one hour. I think it's been one hour. Camel has asked all the questions of me. No, but Khalil, we can go back and forth. We can go back and forth. No problem, Khalil. No problem. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Khalil, your imam has the authority to abrogate prayers altogether. You don't even have to pray like this at all anymore. You don't even have to pray this number anymore. You don't even have to face the Kaaba anymore. Everything is different. Hajj, you don't even have to go to Mecca anymore. You can go visit the uh, the Imam. You see? Uh, zakat, you don't have to pay Zakat anymore. You can contribute to this man's yacht and his uh, his estates and his meatpacking companies and his airline companies and all the rest of it. This is Zakat. You pay 12.5% to this foundation that apparently does... Good work, but at the heart of it makes R and D two hundred million dollar yachts. So, so the, it's a it's a it's a difference, Khalil, and I think it's a difference that uh, you'd recognize. The difference actually comes down to this: our proof is the Sunnah, and your proof is a Masum Imam who rides around on a yacht. This is the difference. Are you done? Mm -hmm. Your okay. turn, Khalil. All right. So here's the thing. You guys have ikhtilaf on basically every Ismaili, uh, every Muslim practice among your madhabs, both on, on ibadah matters and on transactional matters. There's ikhtilaf on every single matter across your four madhabs. The ikhtilaf are mutually exclusive. You can't follow all of these at the same time. Now you say that every point of ikhtilaf can be established by the sunnah. Now, there's a problem with that. If that's truly the case, if the Sunnah establishes every point where there's difference, then either the Sunnah is internally contradictory, to say the Prophet contradicted himself in what he commanded, or the Sunnah is not contradictory, and this most of this ikhtilaf on these divergent points is wrong ijtihad has been made. Error. So which one is it? So Khalil, here's what the ikhtilaf is. I'll answer your question directly. Here's what an ikhtilaf is. When in 2021, the Aga Khan is saying, Zakat is paying me 12.5% of your funding so I can buy jets and, and yacht and yachts and meat packing companies and the rest of it. And in fact, you don't even have to do hajj. Hajj is coming and looking at me. This is hajj. Uh, whereas a few years ago, hajj w was different. So every, depending on what the imam says, says things change. So the imam says this, they change. He says that, they change. This is a contradiction. This is a contradiction. What's not a contradiction is establishing the proof from the sunnah. Now, it's not a contradiction. The sunnah itself is not a contradiction. It's different methods of extracting from the sunnah. But our proof is the sunnah itself, which is there. You have imams over time that change things. He wants to sell alcohol, you can sell alcohol. He wants to engage in interest, he can engage in interest. He wants to buy a yacht, he buys a yacht. He wants you to do hajj by coming and looking at him, you go and do hajj by coming and looking at him. This is a contradiction. Because Khalil, are, are the ba are basic, like, are ba are basic uh, like fundamentals in Islam has to be the same. Yeah. Sorry? I, I was trying to say that, what, Brother Ken, I'll just summarize it. Our basic... Uh, uh, foundation of uh, Ibadah, uh, our articles of faith has stayed the same in four uh, schools of thought, like our foundation of, of theology and our rituals is basically the same. And each difference of, like, say if, you're, if you're praying with your hands folded or your hands down, it's traced back to the Sunnah of the Prophet so Maybe at a different time of his life, he prayed with his hands down or his hands up and so forth. So the, our, our basic five pillars of Islam has been in, set in stone throughout for 1400 years nothing has changed in uh in uh our our theology that's what you're gonna you need to understand so just want to point that yeah, and, the, and the theology so, it's mine so, is essentially allows for the theology to change because for them the quran is not something that's been revealed and that's it revelation is done revelation is continuous through this masum imam that's the difference okay.
And so, if the master okay, man wants to change things, he changes things. So let me respond. So, so here's the thing, right? You didn't answer my question. What you're basically saying is that you guys have a filaf in the present. What you pointed out in the Ismaili case is the imam's guidance at one time is X, and then at a later time the imam's guidance is Y. That is not a contradiction, right? That's not a contradiction at all, because the two differences, the X and Y, don't exist at the same time. But the ikhtilaf among Ahlul Sunnah is manifold, and the ikhtilaf multiplies every generation because new issues come up, more ijtihad is done, and more difference of opinion is generated. So you have an ikhtilaf that basically grows and grows and grows every century, and none of the ikhtilaf has been reconciled. So that's a state of being in mutual contradiction. You can't follow just one, you can't follow all of these together. So somebody is right and everybody else is wrong, or possibly everybody is wrong. You mentioned that there are different methodologies to get stuff from the Sunnah, but then you also say that the Sunnah supports all this. Well, then you have contradictory methodologies. All four methodologies cannot be right at the same time. Either one is right and three are wrong, or all four are wrong. And you, within the Ahlul Sunnah paradigm, have no way to determine which method is right, Okay, none of those methods come from the Prophet. And then furthermore, you have no way to determine which particular opinion within this massive realm of iktilaf is correct. You only simply say all four are legitimate. But the Prophet nor the Quran never said all four madhabs are legitimate. It's actually the um, Mamluk Sultan Baybars who was the first one to declare all four Sunni madhabs as equally legitimate. It's a political Sultan who did that for you. So you have no basis in revelation or the Sunnah to say that all this ikhtilaf is okay or all four madhabs are legitimate. Okay, Khalil, let Kamal come in and address that, please. Okay, so you said none of these methods come from the Prophet. So uh, last time I checked, uh, Khalil, the method that we have the Quran today uh, is through the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum. They transmitted to us the Quran, and they also transmitted his Sunnah, and the Sunnah goes back to the Prophet. So that's uh, that's an absolutely ridiculous point that you made. Now, the ulama take the Sunnah and they extract uh, their rulings from this. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is masoon. The Qur'an is the word of Allah, and they extract the rulings from this. In our tradition, if they make a mistake, they get one reward. If they make it right, they get two rewards. And today, whether you're Hanbali, whether you're Shafi'i, whether you're Maliki, uh, um, etc., you are within an acceptable realm. Right? Yeah, this is accepted. So this is not, don't come to us and try to tell us like, oh, you guys have ikhtilaf and it's mutually exclusive. No. You can be Maliki, you can be Hanbali, uh, etc. Now, as opposed to your point of view, where you seem to have absolutely no problem, where the religion to you is a game, where one year the Imam says, uh, this is how we do Hajj, and the next year he says, that is how we do Hajj. And one year you can sell alcohol, and the next year you can't sell alcohol. And one year in, uh, riba is halal, and the next year riba is haram. To you, the game, it's like Play-Doh. You just play around with it. And it becomes whatever you want over time. To the extent where today you have uh, some guy who has billions of dollars of wealth. Who knows what he's doing now, probably on his $200 million yacht. And you think that this man, this overweight man who sits on his $200 million yacht, has the authority to change the religion. And the sayings of the Prophet, which are transmitted to us the same way the Quran is, this has no authority to you. Instead, the authority is this man on a yacht. Now that, to me, seems pretty ridiculous. You can go ahead and respond, Nakhilin. So number one, uh, saying that, that the Aga Khan has a yacht, therefore he, he, he's illegitimate, that's not an argument. A an asset, owning a particular asset, whether it's a yacht, whether it's a castle, whether it's a kingdom, which the certain prophets were the owners of, none of that invalidates uh, their authority. So this is a, just a red herring. Number two, you say, oh, we just follow some guy. Well, we don't follow some guy. We follow a line of appointed guides whose appointment goes back to the prophet. None of the founders of your four madhabs 
are appointed by the Prophet. No one has authorized their ijtihad. Nobody authorized them to create a madhab. They're just doing it out of their individual initiative without any permission from God or the Prophet. Furthermore, today, you're, if you, you, you can call my thing whatever you want, but your entire paradigm is a bunch of guesswork. You just have ijtihad over ijtihad. And the reason why you need to cite a tradition that says, you know, the jurist gets one reward even if he's wrong, is because you got, because your paradigm means that most of your jurists are going to be wrong anyway. So that's a big problem. Most of your jurists are going to be wrong because there's so much iktilaf. This is basically a religion of guesswork. It's a religion of no revelation at all. Even if you start with the Quran and the Sunnah, as soon as you have multiple ijtihads being done on it, you end up with different results, and they cannot all be correct. So that is a form of corruption. You're corrupting the interpretation of God's revelation. The only way to get out of this situation is if there's one infallible guide who always gives the correct interpretation of the revelation in every age. And when he gives that interpretation, there's no contradiction for his followers. You, on the other hand, are faced with contradiction every day. Just to say your prayer, you have like two dozen different differences in how to pray. And you can't just say all four madhabs are legitimate. Who legitimated them? Well, you said we accept. So it's you yourselves legitimated your four madhabs. God did not. You cannot claim a divine appointment for your four madhabs. We can claim a divine appointment for the imam. All right, Shemo, please respond. Okay, so that's a very simple thing to respond to. So the differences are allowable by the Prophet ﷺ himself. We have a hadith, for example, by, by uh, Ibn Umar, where different groups of Sahabi prayed Asr at different times. And the Prophet ﷺ allowed for this. So the differences are harmonious with the Sunnah. They're not a contradiction like what Khalil uh, is attempting to present. We have differences that go back to the Sahaba. And the Prophet ﷺ approved for this. It's just like different... Um, um, Qiraat of the Qur'an. It goes back to the Sahaba and the Prophet ﷺ approved to this. We have an internally uh, coherent tradition. It makes sense. It's logical and it makes sense. What doesn't make sense, and I'll say it again, is a man who changes the religion as he pleases. Keep in mind he's not Masum. Right? This man does not have Asma. If he was Masum, and by the way, I'm curious to know if he's uh, Masum in all matters, because if he is, I'd like to talk to you about some blunders that he made, such as saying that Ali is the 10th uh, reincarnation of the Hindu deity, I think it's Visha. Anyhow, if you think that this man is Masum, and he allows for the Ali to be the reincarnation of the Hindu Visha, he changes the religion over time. So all you have to say is, actually there's a man who, never mind, you know, Never mind the yacht and the, the wealth, extreme wealth, blah, blah, blah. We have a man, and he changes the religion, but it's no problem, because we all follow somebody. And over time, this person passes it to his son, and his son can change it, and his son can change it. And never mind that a hundred years from now, our religion and our practice will be completely different. But because we follow this one person, that's fine. As for us, alhamdulillah, we have the Qur'an, revealed by Allah, which you claim to believe in, which is given to us by the Sahaba. It's not given to you by the, the, the man on the yacht, nor was it given to, to you by any of his, uh, his forefathers. And no, he's not descended from Ali. He's a, he's a Persian man from the castle of Alamut. Um, it was given to us by the Sahaba. And the Sunnah was given to us by the Sahaba. And the Sunnah allows for the differences uh, that we have. It's explicit in the Sunnah. There's many examples of this. Where the Sahaba prayed different ways and the Prophet allowed for it. Where the Sahaba prayed at different times and the Prophet allowed for it. So the differences are actually coherent in the sunnah. Unlike your tradition where you could, you essentially could care less about the Qur'an because your imam can abrogate it. You could care less about the Prophet wasallam, And this is why you say you have no right to call yourself a Muslim because you don't care about the Qur'an. You don't care about that hadith. Instead, what do you care about? What this guy who's living now, who has all of this wealth, says is the religion. This is what your religion is today. So it has nothing to do with Islam. You're following somebody today. And this is your religion. You're, you could call yourself an Aga Khani, and this is your religion. He for you is uh, is where you take your religion from. As for us, we take it from the Quran, who was who was transmitted to us by the Sahaba, as well as the Hadith, who, like the Quran, transmitted us um, the sayings of the Prophet. So I think that's very clear cut. I don't know where else we can go.
I will. I would well, like to. Well, I, I would again, like to. It, it's not possible. You claim that you take your religion from the Quran and Hadith, but you have a zillion interpretations of the Quran and the Hadith that are in contradiction. So the problem is that if Sunnism is right and Shiism is wrong, you are the best case scenario that you can offer anyone is contradictory iktilaf above, uh, among a bunch of ulama who are self-appointed. The Prophet didn't appoint any of your ulama today. He didn't appoint any of the madhab founders. Now, you mentioned something. You said that the sunnah allows for differences. Now, here's the thing. All these differences you speak of, the sahaba not knowing when to say which prayer, sahaba differing among themselves on a certain practice, that model where you said the Prophet allowed it, so that iktilaf in the time of the Prophet, if there was, that iktilaf is only allowable because the Prophet himself personally authorized it. But after that, after the Prophet's death, you have multiplicity of more iktilaf, which grows every day, and none of that iktilaf has been allowed by the Prophet. None of it. That iktilaf has been allowed by you, because in your model, it's the people who are interpreting the religion based on their personal opinions. That's why you can't even agree on the correct methodology to interpret the Quran and Sunnah for fiqh purposes, and you cannot even agree on a proper theology either. You have at least four theological schools among Ahl Sunnah. So you have iktilaf on fiqh, iktilaf on usul al-fiqh, iktilaf on theology. There isn't like one thing that you guys can get right okay, to okay. agree on. Okay, that let me, does not let me, sound let me, like uh, God's religion. Let, let that me, let me just, okay, like Khalil. a bunch of confused people doing right. guesswork. Khalil, Khalil, I'm going to tell you what a confused person is. Khalil, Khalil, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what a confused person is. You said guesswork. Essentially what you're trying to do is equate differences in fiqh with the pillars and fundamentals of a religion, right? So we say Islam is Buni al-Islam wa ala khamsa, shahada, the Hajj, Ramadan, so in Ramadan, zakat, and uh, and Hajj, right? So we have five pillars of Islam, and this is what this is what it is. We have ikhtilaf in this, but we what you've done is you've literally pulled the carpet out from all of the pillars. And today you have something that doesn't resemble anything that the Prophet ﷺ did. Nothing. The Prophet didn't go visit an Aga Khan. The Prophet didn't pay 12.5% of his funding to the Aga Khan. The Prophet didn't pray three times a day facing somewhere different than Mecca. The Prophet didn't do any of this. So what you've done is you've changed Islam. And this is proof that you're not Muslim. The Ismailis are not Muslim because they don't do anything that the Prophet has done. You can come to us and you can say, oh, look at your differences, blah, 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 blah. But we go back to the Prophet Wasallam. You, you have nothing to do with Islam. You've pulled the carpet out from everything, from the creed, from the practices, from the direction of worship, from literally everything. You have nothing to do with Islam anymore. And you follow a man, and this is your religion, the Aga Khan. So I, I don't know what else to say. I think we've, we've demonstrated to you that We've, we demonstrated to the audience. We said very clear, Khalil, do you pray five times a day? No, I don't. When you pray, do you even face the Kaaba? No, I don't. Do you fast in Ramadan from sunrise to sunset? No, I don't. Do you perform Hajj to Mecca? Or is, is this, any of this even obligatory? No, I don't. Do you believe that this man that has all this wealth through, generated through his 12.5% is private property? Do you believe it is Masum? Yes, I do. Is his name worthy of prostration? Yes, it is. Is he the reflection? Is, is he is he the reflection of God's attributes? Yes, he is. And you want to come tell us? Oh, you have differences in prayer? <laughs> well, what the hell is this, man? Subhanallah. I think we made the point, Akhi. I don't I don't know what else we have to say. We can go back and forth some more, but I think the the point is clear. I, I mean, I I find it strange, right? Like that how, how the way you're talking, uh, because like your entire paradigm is a house of cards. You don't even have an agreement on what Tawheed is. The Asharis, the Maturidis, the Ashris, the Atharis, Ibn Taymiyyah, the Salafis, they can't even agree on a proper doctrine of Tawheed. You say that all oh, our pillars are the same, but they're not the same because you have iktilaf on the practice of all the pillars. And the problem is your iktilaf is unauthorized, your ijtihad is unauthorized. The Prophet didn't authorize Khalil. anything that you're doing. Khalil. Yours is a religion Khalil. made up by Khalil. men. Khalil. Based on Can you point to something that you do today that the Prophet did? 
That's not that's not the metric, my friend. Yes, our parents. Yes, it is the metric because, because for us, for us Muslims, I don't know about you, Ismailis, but for problem. us Muslims, the this Prophet is, is the final Prophet. Yeah, but you don't. The Quran says. ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين. He's the final prophet. So can you tell us? خليل خليل. We don't follow the prophet. We follow the prophet through the people that gave us the Quran. They also gave us the Sunnah. خليل. I don't know if you believe in the Quran or not. I suspect you don't. I suspect you don't. But can you tell us, خليل, how you follow the prophet? خليل خليل. Can you tell us how you follow the prophet? No, and the Quran says, "Ma kana Muhammadin Aba Ahadin min Jalikum." Khalil, let me recite the Quran. Close your mic and listen. Just, just, just. Ma kana Muhammad. Yeah, one second. Ma kana Muhammadin Aba Ahadin min Jalikum, ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين. He's the final messenger. For us Muslims, I don't know about you, Ismailis. For us Muslims, Muhammad is the final messenger. So how on earth are you following him? What do you do today that he did? We follow the final commands of Prophet Muhammad. You don't. And you don't, you don't. How do you follow, follow the prophet example, at all? Khalil, give the example. You just talk. Uh, again, what is, what again, did he do that you do? Deciding the issue. You. What, which, what did he do that no. you do? Which point of? What iktilaf, did he do that you do? Which point of iktilaf? What did he do that you do? No, no, what did question, What do you do that the prophet which, did? Which do you pray like him? Do you dress approve? like him? Did, did he do you pray? do hajj like him? Did the prophet approve? What did he, What does he do that you do? Ibn Taymiyyah. Khalil, don't tell me about Ibn Taymiyyah. Don't tell me about Ibn Taymiyyah. We're sticking with the Prophet. What did the Prophet do that you do? Anything. Anything. Tell me anything. Do you pray like him? Do you dress like him? I don't recognize that metric. We follow the last command. Oh, you don't recognize that metric. Yeah, we follow the last command of the Prophet. Alas, the Prophet to you is some guy who said this Aga Khan is my my Masul. But you have no link. You have no link to the Prophet. Alas, I think this is done. Alas, this is for the audience to understand. Okay, but this man has nothing to do with Islam. It's he doesn't follow the Prophet in any way. He doesn't pray like him, he doesn't do Hajj like him, he doesn't have the same beliefs as him, etc. etc. Which way did the Prophet pray? Which one Khalil, was let me Khalil, make a point. Bro. Khalil, let me, I'm, Khalil, let me make a point. No, let me make you, a point. Yeah, yeah, Khalas, Riz, I think we made the point. When, I think we made the madhab, point. Khalas. Which madhab did the Prophet follow? Which of the Khalil, four? Which Khalil, Salaam school did? Khalil, 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 I'll tell you what he didn't follow. He didn't follow a fat man on a $200 million yacht. The, that the, I can't the, tell the you. The Prophet appointed mm -hmm. his Ahlul mm -hmm. Yeah, he pointed the fat man on the two hundred million dollar yacht. No problem. That man is the Ahlul Bayt, and and I, I'm surprised you. <laughs> that keep man is not Ahlul Bayt, Khalil. Uh, that man is an imposter, just like Shah Ismail Safawi was an imposter. Not at all. Just like this all these other guys is, are an imposter. Yeah, he's Ahlul Bayt. Yeah, right. Khalil, for, for the audience, you can go to Google, type in Google, and look at the Aga Khan on the yacht. Right, just type in uh, Aga Khan gets. Uh, uh, again, you know, I wonder how a Muslim Imam David gets stuck in a situation where a, a, a photographer David takes Solomon a picture of him with his Muslim. trunks with a woman on think, it. So this is the Muslim think, Imam. Uh, do you think, my friend, we don't have but, the same dress code as you have, so it's no, not bro. You let your women run around in tongs and bikinis. I know this, bro. Don't worry about your own. The Imam's uh, again, wife or girlfriend or whatever is the uh, mistress. She's running around in the tongs. Don't worry. I understand this anyway. It's really not an issue for us. Okay, no yeah, problem. You can let your wife run around now. in a tong and a bikini. Now, no problem. Now, now God gave Prophet David and Solomon a great amount of. Time. So well, yeah, no problem. And did their did their wives Khalil also run around in bikinis and tongs? Like your imam does on the yacht. Solomon reportedly had like like several wives and thousands of concubines. Okay. Yeah. And so did David. Last time I checked, Khalil Muslims don't believe right? in the Old so, Testament. So this is so, the, even, khalas, without the khalas, khalas, even without the Old Testament. Even without the Old Testament. Khalil. Even if Islamic khalil, sources mention this. Khalil. So is Khalil. Khalil, bro, bro. Khalil, listen to me. Khalil, listen to me. Khalil. Khalil. Okay? Even Khalil. Uthman, Uthman left Khalil. a great amount of wealth when he died. No he problem. But, but Uthman, Khalil so, prayed like the Prophet. So, he did Hajj like the Prophet. You don't he dressed like the Prophet. But Camel, you, you can't have claim nothing to, to do even do that. You can't even claim to pray like the Prophet because you don't Khalil, know which is the right can way I, can to pray. Make point, so <laughs> to add hoc out of it, you had to say that all four madhabs are right. The Prophet didn't Khalil, follow four Khalil, we, get, I, we understand your position. I think it's been made very clear. Schools. No, so now we get to talk about your position. No, no, our position is as follow, Khalil. We have the Quran. No, 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 no. no. no you this is, this is what we go back to. You have the Quran and Sunnah and...